Hey everyone and welcome to the next level. Today we're going to talk about how to improvise on chord changes. Many of you wrote me about this and one of you said, uh, Ruslan, when I play over one chord, I'm able to express myself and express my heart and let my soul sing in my improvisations. Whereas when I'm confined by different chord changes coming one after another after another, I can't really express myself and my playing becomes very mechanical because I'm busy trying to not make mistakes. And by the time I figure something out, the chord ends and the next chord is already here. And then the next chord is already here and then they change so fast and I can't really feel free enough to express myself and just let my heart sing through my solo. Uh, so yeah, I can totally see how that could be really frustrating. After all, the purpose of playing an improvisation over one chord or over 20 chords is the same purpose. And that purpose is to express yourself and express your heart. And we want as few obstacles in the way of that as possible. We can definitely fix this. There are foolproof methods of helping you learn to navigate through chord changes with ease, grace and creativity. But it will take some work. So if you're up for it, let's do it. I will now show you a three, four step method through which you will be able to master any set of chord changes for the rest of your life. I will demonstrate these steps on one chord first, then on two chords, just to make it as clear as possible for you guys. So here we go. Say we're blowing a solo over G minor, like this. The first thing we have to understand about the chord we're playing on is what the chord scale of that chord is. That is, which scale of notes corresponds well with that chord. In the case of G minor, it's G Aeolian. It's this scale. Or it could also be G Dorian this scale. Now there are many other scales you can use over this chord, like the blues scale, the bebop scale, and this is all fine. But the bare bones of this principle is figure out what scale works over the chord, or what scales work over the chord. Now that you've figured out what the scale is, you should be able to play it from any degree to any degree. Say it's a G minor, so play it from G to G, like this. But also be able to play it from A to A, like this. And also be able to play it from B flat to B flat, like this. Or from C to C, like this. Notice that what I'm playing is the same G minor scale. I just don't always start it from G. Right? Just because it's a G minor scale doesn't mean you have to play it necessarily from G to G. So figure out what the chord scale is and be able to play the chord scale from any degree until any degree back and forth. That's step number one. Step number two, arpeggio plus walk down. Play an arpeggio of one, three, five, seven, nine, and then walk down from nine all the way to one, like this. So if we were in the chord of C major, it would be like this. If we were in the chord of E flat seven, it would be like this. Now, just like the chord scale, 
You shouldn't only be able to do it from the first degree of the scale. You should be able to do it from the second degree of the scale, like this. Or from the third degree of the chord scale, like this. Or from the fourth degree of the chord scale, like this. And so on and so forth. So that's step number two. Being able to do arpeggio plus walk down from any degree of the chord scale. Now step number three. Now, this is the fun one. Find or create some kind of a play along for yourself. And by that I mean an accompaniment over which you could solo. Something like this. Or something like this. Or something like this. Or any kind of genre you like. Now here's the exercise of step number three. We are going to solo around each one of the key degrees of the chord, meaning turn on the play along and for a while solo around the key center of the chord, which in this case is G. Something like this. You could see how I'm soloing, but still I'm always coming back to that G, right? Because I'm soloing around that note. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to solo around the third degree of the chord. In this case, it's B flat. So now you're going to hear me do it again. I'm going to solo freely, but you will notice how I'm always sort of dancing around the third of the G minor chord, which is the note B flat. Something like this. Now the next step, you're gonna solo again, and now you're gonna solo around the fifth degree of the chord. Again, solo freely, but do so around the note D, right? Which means come back to it often, play around that note, like this. And the next step we're going to do is solo over the seventh degree of the chord, which is the note F. Again, I'm going to solo freely, but you will hear me soloing around that F, around that seventh degree of G minor, like this. And the last thing we're going to do in this third step is solo around the ninth degree of the chord, which in the case of G minor is the note A, like this. Of course, the real fun begins when we're starting to play over two chords, or three chords, or four chords. So, when it comes to more than one chord, the three steps I showed you apply just the same. And there is an extra fourth step. So, I'm going to do a quick rundown of this method 
over two chords now. So here are your two chords, G minor to E minor. So very quickly, what are the chord scales? The first one is G minor, the G minor scale. The second one is E minor scale. So we want to be able to play both scales from any degree, like this. Next step, arpeggio plus walk down. We want to be able to do it from any degree of both chord scales. Again, just like we did in the first exercise, like this. Now, we want to be able to solo over the first degree of each chord, like this. Now we want to solo over the third degree of each chord, like this. Now solo over the fifth degree of each chord, like this. Now solo over the seventh degree of each chord, like this. And now solo over the ninth degree of each chord, like this. So now you see how the three steps I taught you before apply to two chords. Now here's the fourth step I was talking about. Every two consecutive chords have two consecutive chord scales. 
as we have already learned. And every two consecutive chord scales have common tones. Common tones are the tones that the two scales share in common. For instance, in the chord scale of G minor and in the chord scale of E minor, what are the common tones? Well, obviously the G, the G appears in both scales. The note A is a common tone as well, as it too appears in both chord scales. The note D is another common tone of those two, as the note D appears in the G minor scale and in the E minor scale. You get the idea. So what does this fourth step essentially entail? It entails identifying what the common tones are between two consecutive chords. And if you have a bunch of chords, then you have to identify the common tones between each two consecutive chords. And then soloing while basing your solo mainly on the common tones that you found. And these common tones are really magical because they help us tie the chords together and create continuity in our lines. For instance, if you're playing over G minor going to E minor, like I have been playing in this video, you would be soloing with the notes G, A and D in mind, because those are the common tones between the two chord scales of G minor and E minor, something like this. So I hope you get the picture guys. This is how you solo on chord changes. I know it's a lot of work, but listen, if you want to pour your heart out over one chord, you can, and it's awesome. Or even like over a blues, like BB King, who is an amazing player who could not play on changes for the life of him. But if you're interested in having the experience of playing on chord changes, you're going to have to do all of this stuff that I outlined here. And I showed you how to do it with two consecutive chords. Now, the same applies with three consecutive chords and four consecutive chords and five and 27. However many chords there are, the steps are the same. Identify the chord scales, be able to play the chord scales from any degree, be able to do the arpeggio plus walk down from any degree on every chord in the tune, be able to solo over the first, third, fifth, seventh and ninth degree of each chord in time, be able to identify common tones of each two consecutive chords. And by the way, sometimes if you have three consecutive chords, all three could have some common tones or all four could have some common tones. That's right. Sometimes you have four chords, one after another, after another, after another, and you discover that all four of them share a couple of notes in common. So find those two. So that's about it, you guys. Uh, there are, of course, a hundred more things you can do. But if you just do this work, the work I outlined in this video, I promise you guaranteed results with sort of untying your hands and allowing you to play freely and express yourself more freely over a set of chord changes. Another bit of good news is if you do this with two, three, four songs, this meticulous work, right? The next two, three, four songs will be a lot easier for you and you won't have to work as hard because your general ability to play over chord changes will have risen by then because of the work you put in on the first couple of songs, right? So I, I know what I showed you seems like a ton of work. The good news is that you won't have to do this with every single tune for the rest of your life, right? Or even if you will, it will go a lot faster eventually because you'll just be better at playing on changes in general. 
please write me in the comments below. I reply to everyone personally and let me know if you have any questions or concerns or wishes for my future videos. I try to address everything you guys write in person and at length because I don't want to be another video on your YouTube feed. I want you guys to actually improve as a result of these videos. So write me below and I will respond and try to coach you and help you as much as I can. Thanks so much. Please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you still haven't. There's a lot more of these videos coming your way and I will see you in the next video.